Yes, Giant Jones, I'm here at home. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to turn a PC power supply into a CB or ham radio power supply. Let's get to it. Now, some of you guys may already know, but I picked up a $2 power supply from AliExpress in hopes of using it for a CB radio video. I don't recommend doing this first time around, especially if you're not used to ball blistering, squirrel burning 120 volts AC. So, what I figure today is if you don't have a standard CB radio power supply or ham radio power supply, whichever one you're powering, that maybe, just maybe, perhaps you have one of these sitting around in your closet, your basement, your garage. It is a power supply for a PC. This is a Dell Optiplex power supply. I had built a gaming PC recently, did a video on that, and this is what I ripped out of the thing. And it delivers 16 amps on 12 volt rail, which by the way is the yellow and black wires there. But if you have not figured this out before, if you played around with these, they will not start unless you screw with them. And then they will start. <laughs> Now first we need to check out our 12 volt rail. Now 12 volt rail is usually used for central processing units or graphical processing units and they come in configurations of 8 or 4 pins. Now we need to test this out, so we'll go ahead. Remember it's the yellow wire, 12 volt, 12 volt yellow wire. So let's go ahead and test this one out. Let's stick it in here. This is plugged up to the wall, but don't worry, this is not the AC side, so you're going to be fine. Now we're not reading anything here. I just hooked that up. And it is, is absolutely, it's secure. We're not reading anything. That's because these power supplies will not work unless you turn them on. Doesn't matter if you plug them in the wall, they will not turn on. This works for every power supply I've ever seen. <clears throat> this is a lime green colored wire, but most of the time it's a little bit darker than that, a darker, more hunter green. But this green wire here, we are going to connect with this little jumper cable I use for breadboards to our ground and it starts it puts out 12 volts now some people say just to stick a paper clip in here personally I don't think that's a very good idea um, I would say just solder them together that'll work just fine it'll keep things from rattling around and doing that while you're talking and then oh where's your power so since we have this have verified of course that it is working all we need to do now is splice these together. All right, so I went ahead and stripped the black and green wires together. That's our switch, remember? And this is not soldered, but this is a test. And of course, I went ahead and stripped the black and yellow wires. This is our 12 volt rail, so you can hook them together. The yellow is fine to twist together. And these are common grounds. They can be twisted together as well. Now, some of you might be saying, Wait a minute, why are you telling people yellow wires, there's more than one 12 volt rail on there. Yes, there may be more than one 12 volt rail on this power supply. If you've never messed with a power supply before, do not try to connect rails together. Sometimes they're independent, sometimes they're not. If they are not independent, then possibly it may be okay. If they are independent, it can cause something to short out. Um, circuitry can of course save you and just shut off or it can just blow up smoke can go everywhere so without further ado let's go ahead and see if this thing will power radio I know that whole spiel was a little bit uh, long-winded but it's very important that you realize that so let's go ahead and hook this up and don't take the top off pretend I didn't do that <laughs> make sure there's no other wires that are spliced touching ground we have this hooked up. I have it hooked up to the bar. I'm going to switch it on and make sure nothing blows up over here. And I don't see any smoke yet. And there we go. Okay. There you go. That is the power supply. It works totally fine. There you go. End of video. Well, not really. I want to try out this, uh, this noise filter for the power supply. I want to try that. And then at the end of the video, which you don't need to worry about, I'm going to modify this the way I want to. But like I said, this is fine. This is tolerable. You can deal with this. I went ahead and actually hooked up my Navajo CB radio because it is super susceptible to noise. And I don't have an antenna hooked up to this. I want to see a before and after, like I said, because this is very susceptible to noise. Um, I want to see what it sounds like before the noise filter and after the noise filter. As you can tell, nothing's hooked up. This is just the noise of the room and it's still coming through. So. Let's go ahead and see what we can figure out with this noise filter, hook it up, and I'm going to place these side by side so you can tell the difference, if there's any difference, between the audio. This is with gain all the way up.
That is a lot quieter. It's still setting beside the power supply, but it's a lot quieter. In fact, I'm gonna move the power supply further away from it, and then we're gonna see what it sounds like. This, this is after I moved it literally beside my foot under the table. Much quieter. And yes, the further away you move it, the quieter it will be. Now you can use it without the noise filter if you want to. I have before, and you can still talk just fine on the radio with it. This is a special case. This radio is really terrible, really susceptible to noise. The caps are probably just exploded and bleeding all over the place. They're dry. So that's why it's such an extreme case here. Most likely you won't have as much noise on your radio using the power supply without the filter. Because even with A and L on, this thing, well, you heard it, it's horrible. That's how you take a PC power supply and use it for ham or CB radio or any other 12 volt device you might want to power within the limit. Now, many of my subscribers, if they've been here long enough, already know that this is like one of the noisiest radios I have. I don't even use it because it's so noisy and I'm too lazy to rip the guts out of it and fix it. So, my point being is this is an extreme example, and you're probably not going to get nearly that kind of noise. I know I didn't. I used a Wii power supply and a unit in 510 for like six months to talk to people, and it was not that noisy. This, like I said, is an extreme example to show you the difference between the power supply alone and the power supply with a noise filter. Anyways, I'm going to do something with this power supply. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, until next time, it's Johnny Jones. I'm here at home, and I'll see you later. <laughs> right, let's hack this open and see what's up. I got the multimeter one lead hook to the 12 volt A. This will be touching 12 volt B rail. And you see there's only like one, less than one ohm between them. So they're the same rail. We just need to hook them together. It'll give us 30 amps. And I'm going to go ahead and take the green wire and go ahead and connect it to ground inside this. And uh, I might even put uh, this little bugger right here in there to see if we can uh, measure the amperage. Problem is it only measures 10 amps, so that's a shame. All right, we're going to test the voltage on the yellow wire and the white wire. 12.3, 12.4, and the yellow wire, we'll just use it right here. That is... 12.3, 12.4. So we can go ahead and hook these up and hopefully nothing will blow up. And as you can see, there's no voltage difference between them whatsoever. So we should be good to go. Okay, moment of truth. We have the yellow and white wires hooked together. If it blows up, it blows up. We'll see. Okay, I don't see anything blowing up just yet. Hopefully nothing does. Let's go ahead and check this. All right. Yep, looks fine. Looks fine. We should be able to use it just like that. And uh, I'll go ahead and splice this together, pull some of these damn wires out of here, get this cleaned up, and get it looking nice. Well, that didn't fuck up the table at all. <laughs> So I pulled a few wires out of here and stripped one. Use that green wire to connect directly to the ground here. So that we'll have a little switch to turn this thing on and off. All right, see if this works. We're almost done here. We're just taping these two rails, which are two different rails, together. And then we will put a piece of heat shrink cubing on it, and we will be done. Hello, we did. Is he got to get that hint trick there and put it on there? Oi, now we're getting close to being done with the video. Oh, God, that was a terrible accent. What the hell was that on there? That was lucky. Lucky, lucky boy. I was going to paint this damn thing. But I ran out of time, so you're going to see some scratch marks. Alright, so I added a toggle switch so I don't have to unplug this damn thing every time I want it to work. 
I went ahead and took those rails, twisted them together, and put some tape on them and a little bit of red heat shrink so I know that that's the positive. I did the same thing with the uh, negative, of course. And um, the green wire, I ran through the switch to the common ground um, where this actually comes from, this black wire. So let's go ahead and test it. We have the multimeter hooked up. Now, before I do so, I want to talk about this. I did not get to use this. I wanted to actually put this thing in here, and uh, but unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it was worth the work. This only displays 10 amps, and I thought, well, I'd really like to show this thing off, but if it's only going to show 10 amps, I'm going to have to unhook it if this thing runs anything higher, or else it'll blow. So I just figured, I don't have the time for it, plus I really don't want to blow this thing up or have to unhook it every time I want to use more than 10 amps. So... I had to just say, screw that, nix it from the video. Anyways, let's see if this thing turns on. Ah! Nah, I'm just kidding. Yeah, it works just fine. 12.5, 12.4 volts. Ah, that's what it looks like after I was done mucking around with it. Um, looks like a bug or something. Hello, operator. Well, that's a bad one. Uh, pretty fun little project. Didn't do as much as I wanted to with it, but okay, yeah. I'll be using that in the future sometime and uh, definitely be using it with the noise filter. Um, probably won't be powering radios with it, but eh, something. If I have to, I have to. Maybe I'll throw it in a, you know, a backpack or something. Who knows? Anyways, until next time, it's Johnny Jones. I'm here at home, and I'll see you later.